Chuck Baldwin, Romans chapter 13, revisited, July 15, 2009. It seems that every time someone such as myself attempts to encourage our Christian brothers and sisters to resist an unconstitutional or otherwise reprehensible government policy, we hear the retort, what about cha Romans chapter 13? We Christians must submit to government, any government. Read your Bible and leave me alone, or words to that effect. No doubt, some who use this argument are sincere. They are only repeating what they have heard their pastor or other religious leaders say. On the other hand, let's be honest enough to admit that some who use the argument are just plain lazy and apathetic and indifferent. In Romans 13 is their escape from responsibility. I suspect this is the much larger group, by the way. Nevertheless, for the benefit of those who are sincere but obviously misinformed, let's briefly examine cha uh, Romans chapter 13. I quote uh, verses 1 through 7 in the uh, King James text. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou, wilt, wilt thou then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he bereath um, not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute. For they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Okay. Do our Christian friends who use these verses to teach what we should not oppose, uh, excuse me, do our Christian friends who use these verses to teach that we should not oppose America's political leaders really believe that civil magistrates have unlimited authority to do anything they want without opposition? I doubt whether they truly believe that. For example, what if our president decided to resurrect the old monarchical custom of first of uh, law of first night? That was the old medieval custom when the king claimed the right to sleep with the subject's bride on the first night of their marriage. Would our sincere Christian brethren sheepishly say, Romans 13 says we must submit to government? I think not. And would any of us respect a man who would submit to such a law? So there is limits to authority. A father has authority in his home but does not give him the power to abuse his wife and children. An employer authority on the job, doesn't give them the right to control the private lives of employees. A pastor is an overseer of the church, but doesn't tell employers in his church how to run their business. All human authority is limited in nature. No man has unlimited authority over the lives of other men. Lordship sovereignty is the exclusive domain of Jesus Christ. By the same token, civil magistrate has authority in civil matters, but his authority is limited and defined. Observe that Romans chapter 13 clearly limits the authority of civil government by strictly defining its purpose. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. For he is the minister of God a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Notice that the civil government must not be a terror to good works. It has no power of authority to terrorize good works or good people. God never gave it that authority. And any government that oversteps that divine boundary has no divine authority protection. This is the basic principle of natural law. And all of America's legal documents, including the U.S. Constitution, are founded upon the God-ordained principles of natural law. The Apostle clearly states that civil government is a minister of God to thee for good. It is not a minister of God for evil. Civil magistrates have a, di have a divine duty to execute wrath upon him that do evil. They have no authority to execute, execute wrath upon him that doeth good. None. Zilch. Zero. And anyone who says so is lying. So even in the midst of telling Christians to submit to civil authority, chapter uh, 13 limits the power of, and reach of civil authority. Did Moses violate God's principle of submission to authority when he killed the Egyptian taskmaster in defense of his uh, fellow Hebrew? How about Elijah uh, when he challenged Ahab and Jezebel? 
How about David when he refused to surrender to Saul's troop? Daniel uh, refusing to, uh, when he disobeyed the king's command not to pray audibly to God. How about the Hebrew children when uh, they refused to bow to the image of the state? Did John the Baptist violate God's principle of submission to authority when he publicly scolded King Herod for his infidelity? How about Simon Peter and the other apostles when they refused to stop preaching in the streets of Jerusalem? Did Paul violate God's principle when he refused to obey the authorities who demanded that he obtain, uh, excuse me, abandon his missionary work? In fact, Paul spent almost as much time in jail as he did out of jail. Remember that every apostle of Christ, except John, was killed by hostile civil authorities opposed to their endeavors. Christians throughout church history were imprisoned, tortured, and killed by civil authorities of all stripes for refusing to submit to the various laws and prohibitions. Did all these Christian martyrs violate God's principle of submission of authority? So even the great pro prophets apostles and writers of the Bible, including the writer of Romans chapter 13, understood that human authority, even civil authority, is limited. Plus, Paul uh, makes it clear that our submission to authority must be predicated on more than fear of government, uh, excuse me, on more than fear of government retaliation. Notice he said, wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake, meaning our obedience to civil authority is more than just because they said so. It is also a matter of conscience. This means we must think and reason for ourselves regarding the justness and rightness of our government's laws. Obedience is not automatic or robotic. It is the result of both rational and deliberate moral approbation. Therefore, there are times when civil authority may need to be resisted. Either governmental abuse of power or the violation of conscience or both could, be, could precipitate civil disobedience. Of course, how and when we decide to resist civil authority is entirely a separate issue, and I will reserve that for a discussion another time. Beyond that, we in the United States of America do not live under a monarchy. We have no king. There is no single governing official in this country. America's supreme law does not rest with any man or group of men. America's supreme law does not rest with the President, Congress, or even the Supreme Court. In America, the United States Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Under our laws, every governing official publicly promises to submit to the Constitution of the United States. Do readers understand the, significant of the significance of this distinction? I hope so. This means that in America, the higher powers are not the men who occupy elected office. They are the tenets and principles set forth in the U.S. Constitution. Under our laws and form of government, it is the duty of every elected official to obey the U.S. Constitution and his or her state constitution. Therefore, this is how Romans chapter 13 reads to Americans. Let every soul be subject to the U.S. Constitution, for there is no constitution but of God. Hmm. The Constitution that be is ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the Constitution resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For the Constitution, not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt then thou be afraid of the Constitution? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For the Constitution is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. The Constitution bereath not the sword in vain. For the Constitution is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore we, uh, excuse me, wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. This cause pay ye tribute also for the Constitution, God's minister, attending continually upon the very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, and fear to whom fear, honor with honor to whom honor. Dear Christian friend, the above is exactly the proper understanding of our responsibility to civil authority in these United States according to the teaching of Romans 13. Furthermore, Christians, above all people, should desire that their elected representatives submit to the Constitution because it's the constitutional government that has done more to protect Christian liberty than any other governing document ever devised by man. As I have noted before in this column, pr biblical principles and natural law form the foundation of all three of America's founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. 
As a result, Christians in America, for the most part, have not had to face the painful decision to obey God rather than men and to defy their, defy their civil authorities. The problem in America today is that we have allowed our political leaders to violate their oaths of office and to ignore and blatantly disobey the supreme law of the land, the U.S. Constitution. Therefore, if we truly believe Romans 13, we will insist and demand that our civil magistrates submit to the U.S. Constitution. Now, how many Christians are going to truly obey Romans chapter 13? If you appreciate this column and want to help me distribute the message, send donations and blah, blah, blah. And if you really appreciate this message, you will share it or make a video of your own saying pretty much the same thing. Thank you very much. It's been a while. I miss you all. Adios.